The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the capabilities and usage of Fleet Manager in MindSphere version 3. Fleet Manager is an information portal where you can view all available information about your assets. Along the left is a list of your assets, including subtenants as well as organizational assets such as areas. For example, if I look at Acme Air, click on the arrow, here we have a site, and within the site we have an area, and within that area we have an asset. Also listed in our assets are our hardware assets, such as our MindConnect Nano, although Fleet Manager is mostly useful for viewing data about specific assets that we have created from types. Fleet Manager has six different sections, each of which will be explained in this video. The view that you will likely use the most in Fleet Manager is Aspects. From Aspects, after selecting an asset, you can see each of the aspects that are associated with that asset. By clicking on the aspect, you're able to view the associated data points and a time series graph. The data that we're looking at now is actually coming from FP2328 at Bojan Road. And by looking at production data, we can tell that this press has not been run for a while. So to get some better data to look at, I'm going to go look at a different asset which has some older data. Let's look at the machine status and runtime aspects. And then we'll go back in time a little bit to find some more interesting data to look at. Now here we can see where the press was actually running, um, where it was changing state. And here we can see a period of time where the press was either turned off or the MindConnect Nano may have been turned off, or there may have been a network error between the MindConnect Nano and the FinPress. Most likely the press was just turned off at this point. Within an aspect, some variables may only change by one or two digits, whereas others may change by hundreds or thousands. And because the aspect time series chart scales to fit the largest number, it can be difficult to see the changes in some of the other variables. So in order to see some of the variables that don't change as much, you can simply click on a variable to add or remove it from the time series chart. Now we're able to see some of the more subtle changes that have been happening because our scaling now goes only from 0 to 3 instead of 0 to 199. To explore the other views within Fleet Manager, click on the plus tab. And from here, you can access the other views available. Next, let's look at events. The events view allows us to see any events that have happened based on rules that we have set in for that asset. Uh, let's go back in time to find some events that have happened in the past. Uh, actually, let's look at this one. Here we go. Here we can see a couple of events that have been happened uh, based on a rule. Triggers can be specified in the rules view to create events when a certain condition is met. These events can then also send an email to a specified list of email addresses to notify plant managers or other personnel that something needs to be investigated. Once an event has been resolved, you can select it here, and then press Acknowledge to acknowledge the event. Next, let's look at the Rules view.
here we see a list of rules that have been created for this asset. I'll edit the asset so we can take a closer look at it. To create a rule, you must first select a variable to monitor. Here we're monitoring the M status integer of the FinPress. Next, you, can find a, you define a condition. For example, if M status is equal to 3, which is the error condition, then we want to do something. You can also uh, change the way that uh, you, events are triggered so that there will be a time delay between events so that you don't get too many notifications. And that can be handled more down here as well. Here we want to send no more than one event, or create no more than one event every minute. Here is a description of the error, and here you can specify the severity of the error. Here is where you can set up emails to be sent out when a specific condition is met. The email will contain a description of the event, the description that was entered right here, so that the plant manager or maintenance personnel will be aware of what happened and know how to handle the event. Lastly, you can define the rule name as more than one rule may exist for an asset. Here's an example of an email that was generated by a MindSphere event. The email includes the event rule name, the tenant asset on which the event occurred, severity, description, timestamp, variable affected, and the value of the variable. Now let's look at a different view. Export allows you to export aspect data from an asset. Um, for example, FinPress aspect 1 currently has no time series data available, so we're not able to export anything. But if I change this to something that you know does have data available, we can export the data as either a CSV file or a JSON file. Let's grab a CSV file so we can see what it looks like. Note that data will only be exported for the specified time range above. Now here we can view all of our time series data. The timestamp, timestamp, and then the value of the variable or variables within that asset. In this case, we have two variables, heartbeat and seconds. And this aspect is being monitored once a second. Heartbeat is set to alternate between true and false once every second, which we see that it does. And seconds is designed to count up every second, which it does. After exporting data to Excel, you can do things like create custom charts and graphs. Next, let's look at the information view. From the information view, we're able to see all the information about our asset. There's the MindSphere asset ID, name, type, etc. Here we can also see whether the asset is online, which may be helpful, as well as which MindConnect element it is connected to. At the bottom, you can see an asset location if it has been set, where you can see on a map where that asset is located. The Files view enables us to upload files to a sort of Dropbox for that specific asset. Uh, this is a place where you could upload, for example, a manual or other forms of documentation for that specific asset.